Well, good morning. My name is Moses Barrios, and I am the senior pastor of Calvary by the Sea. Uh, pronouns he, him, and his. And uh, you should know that, you know, I'm an indigenous American of Mayan descent, and I recognize all the arts, all the uh, successes of my ancestors. And yet I recognize the ills and the burdens that they've experienced. You should know that if you're here today, we welcome you. We, we, you should know you're loved and that you are um, in, a, in a safe space and that God is well pleased with you. Certainly, our prayers this morning um, cannot, we cannot miss what is happening around our world and the prayers that go out to those experiencing war and injustice and pain and suffering. But I think also of the community in Buffalo, New York today. My prayers are specifically for the black community there, um, for those 10 lives that have been lost, for those three others that have been uh, wounded. Uh, when a white gunman would look up demographics seeking to find the most concentrated area of black residents, you know black lives do not matter. When uh, you once see again the realities of the sin of racism, when you're deliberately killed because the color of your skin, because of your racial identity, we can well see that evil persists. We deeply mourn with the people of Buffalo, with the families of these 13 individuals, those who were innocent, hunt down without cause. I mean, I, how does one respond to such injustice? How is the community of Buffalo doing this morning? See, I, from here, we can lament this morning. We can mourn this morning. We can stand in solidarity with Buffalo. You know why? Because that could be us. That could easily be our community. It could easily be our uh, food. What's the name of our? No, the food bank. Oh, not the food bank. The place where we get groceries. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Foodland. Thank you. Wow. But sincerely, it could be our city. It just happens to be Buffalo, New York. But we denounce the sin of racism. We rebuke white supremacy. We denounce evil. We declare forgiveness, healing, and recon reconciliation. Because that is who Christ is. That who, that's who Jesus is. And so we pray for that this morning. In our world. Everywhere. I was in Silver Lake area this is a small area within downtown los angeles i found myself praying for a single mother who was grieving the loss of her mother to a terminal illness by the end of that encounter i invited her to join and to visit this church plant i had just started this new church and i had recently started it with some friends and i asked her to come and visit she came she visited and she discovered the love of jesus in our community because at that point, the church was very small, and one thing that was very evident was the love of Jesus. It was present, it was real, it was honest, it was like it had hands and feet, it moved, it, it did all kinds of things. And the moment came when she needed some transportation, and she had no resources to pay for that transportation. And as all you know, Los Angeles, without mobi mobility, it is nearly impossible. So what did the congregation do? We responded. We collected money, we purchased and gifted her a used vehicle for her son and her. She was so happy, so thankful. Still to this day, she continues to be a supporter, a loyal follower of Jesus. Recently sent me a message about watching our service online from Los Angeles here. Sends words of gratitude. But the point of my story is that Jesus' love embodied in Jesus' people, shall we say, it is life-changing. It is life-altering. It, it, it somehow it becomes more than words. It becomes more than just showing up to church. It's, it's like this thing that changes us from the inside out. And to love like Jesus 
is to be generous with our time, to be generous with all that we have, our abilities, our gifts, our monies, everything that we have. And when we experience Jesus' love through Jesus' people, well, we get all caught up in it. Somehow, love truly flows down. I've titled today's sermon, Christian Love is Perfectly Imperfect. Today's wisdom derives from John's gospel, and certainly, you have to understand, this is a new period set into motion. This wisdom is showing us a whole new mode of living is inaugurated. How will Jesus be present with his disciples if he no longer is physically here? Think about it. Jesus breaks the news to his disciples. He will no longer be physically present. And let's be honest about this moment. No more hugs. No more handshakes. No more meals with Jesus. No more jokes. No more funny stories. No more of that contact person to person. Things have changed. Jesus will no longer be present. How would you feel if you heard that news? See, I think we know exactly how that feels because we just went through a global pandemic. We know what isolation looks like, what it looks like to be physically absent from our loved ones. As a congregation, we know what that feels like to be online, to be absent uh, uh, physically, but to still gather. We spent two thirds of 2021 online most of 2020 online. We just returned this year to being in person three months ago. I know it feels like a long time, but it's not. Things are different. We are still trying to figure it out. COVID is still present. It may never leave us, and we're still learning to live with it, to deal with it, and to respond to it. And so we know a few things about new modes of living. We should have a better understanding of this moment. Jesus is going away, and this is sort of like a farewell moment. Because his disciples cannot go where he is going. They cannot follow him to this trial, to this crucifixion, to this death, to this resurrection. If there was ever a moment to listen to this voice, it was now. Because time is running out and things are about to change. So what does Jesus do? He guides them. He guides this new community of believers to a new commandment. In the Greek, commandment is a new prescription. Did you hear me? A new injunction, a new law. He has never asked of them this before. Up to this point, all that Jesus had asked from his disciples is to believe. But now Jesus asks for the very first time, love each other as I have loved you. And see, here this morning is where the wisdom enters our, our gathering, our wisdom. I, I think that the wisdom that, that is being described in today's Holy Scriptures is a wisdom that really speaks to us in 2022. How is it that we can relate to isolation, to being absent from one another till today and have this opportunity to come before the divine before God, trusting that God has something to say to us this morning. Trusting that our concerns, our worries, our burdens, our questions, our doubts, that all of those things God is big enough to know, to answer, to guide us, to lead us. And so this morning, the wisdom is for us to engage it, to ask what it means for us. Because today's wisdom is for all who truly want to embody Jesus, who truly want to reflect Jesus to the world, for those who believe that Jesus is the remedy of the world, the cosmic hope for the world, that Jesus' love is the medicine that all humanity needs. And here is the wisdom. When we learn to love like Jesus, we learn to love each other. And that love will change everything. You may ask, well, how does Jesus love? Well, we know that Jesus loved his disciples selflessly, right? 
He was not seeking something in return. Jesus loved his disciples by giving himself to his disciples. By doing something that only he can do. I wonder when is the last time that you loved someone by giving of yourself. By doing something for someone that only you can do. Jesus loved his disciples sacrificially. He loved his disciples and had no limits to his love. Whatever his love demanded, he would do it, even if it meant to carry the pain and the suffering of others. You see, this kind of love is not about happiness, but it's meant to walk with those who are in pain and those who are suffering. When was the last time you loved someone by walking the road of pain and suffering with them? Jesus loved his disciples generously. Despite knowing the worst of his disciples, he still loved them. You think he didn't know their flaws? You think he, didn't, he was annoyed by them? Of course he was, and still his love remained. It is it not true that those who know our mistakes and failures still love us and demonstrate true love to us? Jesus truly accepted his disciples, not in part, but the whole, not the things he agreed with, but even the things he didn't agree with. When have you loved someone like that? The whole person with their mistakes, their failures, their disagreements, their faults, and their weaknesses. And Jesus loved his disciples forgivingly. Even when his disciples failed him, and if you remember, they failed him. They literally denied him in his hour of need. But even their blindness, their inability to understand, their inability to learn, despite their cowardice, Jesus held nothing against them, no failure which he could not forgive. Because love without forgiveness will only die. When you love, love with forgiveness holding nothing against anyone. See, I guess what I'm submitting to you this morning is the reality of being a community of love. Because when you're a community of love, you will discover that love is beautiful. But you're also going to discover that love is messy. And that it's not easy to love someone the way that Jesus loves us. In fact, I realize that when we start realizing that someone is imperfect, we somehow retreat our love. We somehow decrease our love. We somehow start pulling out softly, gently. Because somehow we thought this person was perfect. And when we realize that that person is not perfect, that we don't agree with everything with that person, then we start not loving like Jesus. And I guess what I'm also saying is how important it is to love each other is a very Christian thing. It's a very church thing. And when the church can't love one another, when we as Christians can't love one another, despite our common bond, right? Then how do we expect the world <laughs> to love like we love? How do we expect the world to know this love if we can't even exercise it in this room today? And I guess you have to understand, I think, that one way to like say and show to the world that love is real, that Jesus is real, is when we love one another. It is like the, the visible sign that, oh, love exists. It's like the medicine that when we love each other like this, despite the fact that we shouldn't, right? Because we probably don't, aren't in the same love life stages. We don't have the same uh, ethnicities or uh, uh, political leanings. I mean, there's a million things, right, that, that make us different. But to be able to love one another the way that Jesus loves us, it is medicine, it is healing, it is reconciliation for the world. But it starts in here. It starts in us. And see, I wonder, I don't know if you caught this, why did Jesus say to his disciples, little children? Did you catch that? He wasn't saying it because they were young kids or youth or anything like that. I think he's saying it because he wanted them to have a mindset of their love. That they should love one another like children. 
like siblings, treating each other as equals, as family members. After all, you know and I know a child easily forgives, quickly forgets, generously gives love away. Loving like a child carries the ability to love someone regardless of their exterior, regardless of their political views or who they love or whether you agree with their lifestyle or not, whether you identify with their stage of life or not, whether you speak like them, eat like them, dress like them, those things don't matter. Love is the ability to be concerned for another's well-being regardless of their race, religion, or identity. You see, I think of communities of color. I think of the queer community, of young people, families with children, of women and other who communities have been oppressed because Jesus' love calls us to love the church with all of its mistakes, ills, failures, burdens. Despite its historical failures, despite the, the, the continued perpetuating of racist and sexist and homophobic and colonizing systems, Jesus' love compels all of us to love the church. Because all we desire for, right at the end of this, is that the American Christian church would be well. We, we, all we really want is to regard its, war, its welfare. We want it to be healed, to be repaired. We want the best version of the church and to be put back on the track of justice, to be shifted towards inclusive and holistic trajectory. Oh, I dream of the day when we get to see black, brown, and indigenous people, women of color, fill our churches because they are valued, celebrated, and heard. I dream of the day when the queer community fill our pews because they feel welcome, acknowledged, and affirmed. I dream of the day when young people, when college students, young professionals enter our churches by the droves to seek Jesus because they sense that they are being prioritized. Have we forgotten what it feels to be a young mind and young soul? See, I dream of the day when families with children will fill our worship services because they feel freedom to let their kids be kids, to be loud, messy, wild, because that's what children do. And we've forgotten just how curious the mind and the heart of our children were from the ages of two to eight. Come on, church. We need to learn to love like Jesus. But a true community of love will be beautiful and will be messy. Thomas Merton, the Roman Catholic mystic thinker and writer, said this. I think this is really good. The beginning of love is the will to let those we love be perfectly themselves. The resolution not to twist them to fit our own image. See, perhaps the starting point for us this morning is to stop trying to make others like us. Perhaps the baby step that we can take this morning to love like Jesus is to let that person be perfectly themselves and perhaps that will unlock the door to the next step. The point is, we got to start somewhere. We got to start somewhere, church. Jesus shows us this morning his love, demonstrates to us his love, because love has a meaning. I would say to you, love has an action attached to it. Love does not hide, it is not silent. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. And Jesus, the perfect love, the God in the flesh, the face of the hidden God, the apex of the human narrative died on a cross to take away our shame, our failures, mistakes, our transgressions, gives us his forgiveness, his successes, and his righteousness, and was raised on the third day to give us liberation. Liberation for what? You see, I would argue liberation to love one another in the image of the benevolent and generous Trinitarian God. Have we ever considered that the measuring stick, shall we say, of our love for God is manifested in how we love one another? 
Perhaps we need to recognize that our love for one another is the true sign of healing and reconciliation that our world is desperately seeking that can't quite see it. As someone asked me about a banner we had up front of our property, why such boldness? Why such a large banner in front of the property saying yes everyone with a flag next to it? Why say that we love all of our neighbors, our LGBT neighbors, our village elders, our young adults, our families with kids? Why say something about loving immigrants or stopping Asian hate in this world or that black lives do matter or that these lands are indigenous lands? Well, how else will people know that we love our neighbors if they do not have a visible sign? Yeah, for too long, love has been this theory, this philosophy, this thing that we throw around. But where is the visible image of that love? We need to start loving with generosity, with grace, with forgiveness, with sacrifice. See, I believe when we do that, Jesus will be ever so present, ever so here, near, alive in us. The world will see it and they will know it. They will know who we are because of that love. They won't need an invitation. They won't need some clever sermon series, some cool church name or logo or any other program you can think of. They won't even need a beautiful property. They will see the love and they will be caught up by that love. After all, love is patient. It always trusts. It always hopes. It always perseveres. Love, it will never fail us. May we today step in, take that baby step to learn to love one another the way that Jesus loves us. How many times do we do the wrong thing, say the wrong thing, make mistakes, and yet God's love keeps going, keeps loving us, keeps embracing us, keeps including us. Help us, Jesus, to love like you. Word of God and word of life, and we all say, thanks be to God. Would you pray with me this morning?